Hi guys! Today we've got a pretty fun video. One I've wanted to make for a while, but I was just uh, a little worried about posting it because it's like a niche within a niche, and I wondered if anyone would even be interested in it, but here we are. I gave in. So aside from dolls, another big hobby that I have is J fashion. I've talked about it a little bit here and there. I've worn clothes from Japanese brands in some of my videos, but I've never made any kind of dedicated video on the subject. I do consider dolls like my more primary hobby and J fashion pretty secondary, only because both are <laughs> so very expensive. I am mostly involved in Lolita and Fairy K, but I have a wide appreciation for all different kinds of styles. When I was in college, I studied abroad in 2016 in Japan, and my big, like, my big project, my thesis for the time there was all about J fashion. Does that make me an expert on the subject? Absolutely not. I just, I wanted to mention it. But anyways, the subject of today's video is all about dolls and J fashion, specifically when fashion dolls incorporate J fashion. And there's a few different ways they go about this. They are collaborations with actual J fashion brands. They take heavy or direct inspiration from J fashion, or maybe they're just kind of vaguely inspired. Before we get into the specifics, though, I do want to briefly go over some of the J fashion styles. Just the ones that I think we're most likely to see in this video, just to catch everyone up to speed. And so I don't have to stop and explain every time a new style comes up. So, a very brief crash course in J fashion. And to preface this section, again, like, it's my hobby, but I'm not a J fashion YouTuber. I don't consider myself a total authority on the matter. So if this video interests you and you really want to learn more about specific J fashion styles in a really in-depth way, I'm going to put some content creators down in the description that I think can really help with that. So to define J fashion first, it's fashion from Japan. It can be used to mean literally any kind of clothing of any style that originated in Japan, but it's most often used to refer to what you'll also see called Harajuku fashion. That's to say, alternative fashion styles with specific aesthetics that often go against traditional beauty standards or social expectations. First, a very big and prominent one, Lolita fashion. Not even the least bit associated with the book. I hate even bringing that up, but I know someone's probably going to ask. Lolita is inspired by specifically Victorian and Rococo era clothing, and has a pretty distinctive silhouette, with a full skirt, usually around knee length, over a petticoat or a crinoline. Lolita fashion is usually associated with looking and feeling very elegant, so you'll see a lot of things like lace, frills, bows, etc. Generally, the basic components of what's considered a proper Lolita cord or Lolita outfit are pretty consistent. They're not super flexible, but there are three main substyles: sweet, gothic, and classic, as well as an endless amount of smaller, more niche substyles underneath those. Decora. Decora is characterized by being very playful, colorful, and very over the top. It's all about layering clothing pieces, wearing an abundance of accessories, and mixing different colors, patterns, and textures. Unlike Lolita, Decora doesn't have like a specific silhouette or specific clothing items that are absolutely essential. It's less about the clothing pieces themselves and more about how it all comes together. Decora also very intentionally has an element of childishness to it, so it's pretty common to incorporate things like toys or cartoon characters into cords. Giaru. Uh, Giaru started out as a rebellion, sort of against traditional Japanese beauty standards. At its peak with Giaru, you'd see a lot of tanned skin, big blonde hair, elaborate nail art, high, high heels, 
and outfits that were considered pretty sexy or provocative. There's still Gyaru who dress like that, but they're not, it's not really considered essential to the style anymore. The core tenets are still there. It's still very much associated with looking mature, very feminine, glamorous. Some substyles of Gyaru include Hime Gyaru, which focuses more on looking very cute and princessy, and Kogao, which is where students incorporate elements of Gyaru onto their school uniforms. Fairy K, a style that's inspired by 80s and 90s aesthetics, but with a pastel color palette. Common descriptions of Fairy K are things like cute, dreamy, floaty, and fancy. So a lot of tutus, leg warmers, baggy sweaters, oversized t-shirts, that sort of thing. A lot of it revolves around invoking nostalgia and the feeling of being a kid again. So you'll see a lot of things like toys, dolls, vintage cartoons, vintage anime, aesthetics from childhood, etc. incorporated into it. And I think that covers the bases. Like I said, not comprehensive. There's plenty of others. These are just the ones that I think, for fashion dolls specifically, when they want to incorporate J fashion, these are the ones they're most likely to turn to. And with that out of the way, we can start talking about the dolls now. So the first category I want to cover, dolls that were actually sold in Japan and therefore as close to the source as you can get. The first I'm going to talk about pull-up. Now, pull-ups were created by a South Korean artist named Chong Song Chan Ha and were first produced by the company June Planning in Japan. Since 2009 though, the Japanese branch of June Planning fell into bankruptcy and now they're operating out of Groove in South Korea, but are still very widely sold and available in the Japanese market. They're considered adult collector dolls, so they're pretty expensive and high quality, but if you want the most authentic J fashion experience possible in a fashion doll, a pull-up is absolutely where you want to go, because they don't just incorporate J fashion into the dolls, they're always doing direct collaborations with real J fashion brands. I'm gonna name drop a lot of brands here, so you can consider this uh, part two in our crash course if you want. For Lolita, Pull Up is done collabs with Angelic Pretty, which is probably the most ubiquitous Lolita brand, especially when it comes to sweet Lolita, but also a lot of other really popular brands too, like Baby the Stars Shine Bright, Alice and the Pirates, Monosama's brand that, if I pronounce on camera, I know someone's gonna get mad at me, Victorian Maiden, among quite a lot of others. For Decora, there's a collaboration with 6% Doki Doki, and for Fairy K, there was a collab with the brand Nile Perch, announced just a few months ago, actually. And for Gyaru, there's not as many with specific brands, but there are dolls that are referred to specifically as Gyaru. The doll Aya here is labeled as Hime Gyaru. We Vera and Sienna, they're pretty obviously meant to be Gyaru. Bonnie, I think, is at least Hime Gyaru inspired, if anything. And that's really just scratching the surface. Pull ups are definitely the gold standard for J fashion, fashion dolls. And I don't know, I just love the idea of supporting a brand that I love by buying a doll that's dressed in their fashion. Second on the list, Rika-chan. Rika-chan is a Japanese fashion doll that's been around since 1967. And she's often referred to as like the Barbie of Japan. She's extremely iconic and I mean, just look at her. She's adorable. I love her. Rika is known for her very flouncy, very girlish aesthetic. So it follows suit that a lot of her dolls would take heavy inspiration from Lolita fashion, specifically Sweet Lolita. E even a lot of her, just her basic signature dolls, have a very identifiable Lolita silhouette. She has outfits that I think could easily be classified as Fairy K too. And the hashtag Lika line, which reimagines Lika as a 17 year old, has some specific J fashion elements too. The Auharu blazer doll, to me, 
It definitely reads as Kogao. There's a collaboration doll with Wego, which is a pretty popular J fashion shop. And there's one called Peeps Sweets, which Peeps is a style I didn't cover earlier. It's pretty recent, I think just from the last two or three years. And it's defined as a 90s inspired sporty style that incorporates a lot of dark colors and elements of goth fashion. Now, aside from Lika, there's another doll named Ginny, who by definition actually is the Barbie of Japan. The toy company Takara, who also owns Lika-chan by the way, had a licensing deal to produce Barbies for a Japanese market. In 1986, however, they ended the agreement and kept the rights to the doll's design, which they renamed to Ginny. Now, Ginny's whole thing is that she's a 17-year-old fashion model, and she's had collabs with real brands too. She had one with the Lolita brand Victorian Maiden, also Angelic Pretty, Metamorphose, Baby the Star Shine Bright, the Decora brand Galaxy, but I think by far the most popular style for Ginny was Gyaru. For one, there was an entire line within the Ginny Fashionista series where Ginny and her friends were all assigned a substyle of Gyaru. So Ginny was assigned Gyaru, her friend Mirai had Kogao, Jessica was given Hime Gyaru, Ayano had Hime Kaji, which is uh, pretty similar to Hime Gyaru, but just considered a lot more casual, and Shion was given One Gyaru which is defined as a, a more mature and developed style of Gyaru. But I honestly think you could just pick any random Ginny doll from the 90s and later, and you'd probably be able to spot some kind of Gyaru influence in her. Okay, so that covers dolls that are sold in Japan that have very direct ties to J fashion. But what about dolls made outside of Japan, right? These, I think, fall into two pretty distinct categories. Doll lines that make J fashion a core part of their concept, and ones that don't, but still have dolls that are obviously inspired or influenced by J fashion in some way. We're going to visit the first category first, going in really no particular order, starting with a line called Shiba Juku Girls. These are from the Australian company Hunter Products, launched in 2016. The name is a combination of Shibuya and Harajuku, which are big fashion districts in Japan. Harajuku is actually where a lot of these fashion styles originated. Well, if you want to get technical, Harajuku is a district in Shibuya, but yeah, that's where the name comes from. So obviously these are directly inspired by Japanese fashion. They're also, in my opinion, pretty inspired by pull-ups, which is fine. I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily, but important to mention. The characters are also all Japanese, evidenced by their names. The first wave had Suki, Namika, Shizuka, Koei, and Yoko. And side note, apparently Namika comes in two versions, one with pale skin and one with dark skin that was exclusive to the American market. As far as the J fashion inspiration goes, I do think it's a little vague for my taste. Like I see the elements. Namika could easily be read as Kogao. Shizuka has a sort of a sweet Lolita chord going on. And Koei, I mean, animal prints are a big thing in Gyaru. This could very much be a Gyaru outfit. But they're definitely not as good or as genuine as they could have been. And I'm not saying they need to have every single element down perfectly. But if you're going to name your doll something like Shibajuku, I think it does leave a little to be desired when it comes to the fashions. I think it just comes down to a lack of research or just not really caring, I guess. Because dolls would be a great way to get kids into things like J fashion, but there's like no real information on what inspired these outfits, where they come from, what makes them Japanese fashion, you know? 
And as Shibajuku girls went on, the J-fashion inspiration just became even more vague to the point that, like, I don't see anything really that specifically stands out as J-fashion. So I definitely do think they missed the mark quite a bit. I don't know, though. My standards could just be really high for this sort of thing. I, I can admit that. Next on the docket, courtesy of Gwen Stefani, Kuku Harajuku. These dolls are from 2017 and were manufactured by Mattel. Though, Kuku Harajuku was uh, primarily an animated series, the dolls were more for promotion and merchandising. So, Gwen Stefani has, for a very long time, incorporated Japanese elements into her career. Way back in 2004, she had an entourage of four Japanese and Japanese-American women that were referred to as the Harajuku Girls. She has a perfume label called Harajuku Lovers. And there's obviously a broader conversation here about cultural exchange and cultural appropriation, but I'm not here to make that specific judgment one way or the other. I'm just here to talk about Kuku Harajuku and how it handled its J fashion. And the answer is not very well. The plot of Kuku Harajuku follows Gwen's self-insert and her band and their adventures in the fictional Harajuku city, which is our first big red flag because Harajuku is already a real place and it's not a city. And none of the fashion is distinctly Japanese either. There's no inspiration taken from any actual Japanese styles or brands that that I can see. I mean, you could argue that the characters' uniforms are Kogal-inspired, but that's really stretching it. It all just reads as kind of cynical to me, honestly. Like, this is just what an American businessman in his mid-40s thinks when he hears the word kawaii. Like, a sushi dress. I mean... Come on. And again, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with just having a vague, cutesy, kawaii aesthetic, but if you're going to specifically call back to Harajuku, then there absolutely needs to be some level of research and respect that we didn't get here. Next, Juku Couture. These are from Jack Specific in 2008, and as you've probably surmised by now, the name, yet again, comes from Harajuku. But I think Juku Couture is actually so superior to Shiba Juku and Kuku Harajuku because I genuinely think they got it right. So the big thing with Juku Couture is that the dolls come dressed in several layers of clothing and you are free to experiment, give them as many or as few layers of clothing as you thought was necessary. It was all about creating a look that was unique and personalized, which I think is very much in the spirit of J-fashion. I don't think they were taking inspiration from specific brands or anything, but the outfits are definitely reminiscent of Decora. Specifically like old school fruits magazine Decora. So compared to the last two, I'm actually pretty impressed with the thought that went into these. I really don't mind that they're not like super specific about the styles because they capture the essence of J fashion so well, if that makes sense. And some of the fashion packs especially, like the silhouettes and the way the clothing is layered, I don't know. I just feel like the J fashion influence is so clear to me in ways that it wasn't with the others. And the fashions have also aged really well too. Like I feel I could go to Tokyo Fashion's Instagram right now and see these girls there, you know? Now, the next category. Dolls that don't factor J fashion into their core concept, but still have incorporated it in somehow. At first, I want to talk about Ever After High. So, a lot of Ever After High outfits have a very similar silhouette to Lolita fashion. And I think a lot of it just comes down to taking inspiration from the same place, Rococo and princess dresses, right? 
But there are a few instances where I do absolutely think Lolita was somewhere on the mood board. First, with the character Blondie Locks, like the head bow, the cupcake skirt with the print, the bow details, like this, it's a Lolita cord. Also, her epic winter doll, very similar to some coats I've seen. The line, Hattastic Tea Party 2, I think borrows some elements from Lolita, specifically with the skirt shapes and the prints. I think Ever After High is a good example of taking inspiration and incorporating it in a way that's cohesive, you know? They were obviously just drawing from things that were trendy at the time, but it wasn't totally in your face like it was for some others. And since they're not claiming to be J fashion, they're also allowed to take some liberties with it too. Like, I'm not mad that Blondie Locke's dress doesn't technically have sleeves or that her tights are sheer or that she's wearing black shoes with what's clearly a sweet print. I just think it's cool to see the inspiration cross over. Next, Ever After High's sister series, Monster High. Specifically, we're going to talk about the character, Jackie Laura, who, since her conception, is really often referred to as a gothic Lolita. Now, I personally don't find that to be particularly accurate. I think it comes from a misunderstanding of what Lolita is. Like, yes, a lot of Jackie Laura's outfits do have Victorian fashion elements, just like Lolita does, but they lack the fundamentals of a, a proper Lolita outfit. There's only two dolls that come to mind that I do actually think have some sort of Lolita inspiration. First, her School's Out doll, which, yeah, I think this could qualify as a Lolita cord. The skirt is a little short, but, I mean, it's monster high. But, like, the bow, the lace, the tiered skirt, the buttons, I can absolutely see what they were going for. I'm not really sure what to classify it as, though. It's a little too colorful to be gothic, yet a little too dark to be sweet. So, if you have any kind of strong opinion on the matter, fight it out in the comments for me. And the second one, her Picture Day doll. Super cute, right? And definitely gothic Lolita inspired. You got the head bow, the Peter Pan collar, the border print on the skirt. She even has platform shoes that lace up her legs, like the Vivian Westwood rocking horse shoes, which were a huge Lolita staple. I don't actually know if that was intentional, but regardless, it's a really cool detail. Next, a doll line that's also near and dear to my heart, Cutie Pops. Cutie Pops are another that I think was they're pretty inspired by pull-up, just going off their proportions, but again, not inherently a bad thing. And though they never say it outright, they're pretty obviously sweet Lolita inspired, right? Hair bows, big cupcake shaped skirts, lace, charms that emulate cute prints on a skirt. Uh, the doll Cookie comes with a beret, which is a very common Lolita accessory. And the second wave of dolls, honestly, they take it even further, and they get the dress shapes a lot more accurate. They do start to kind of lose the plot with the later dolls, though. And again, because these don't say anywhere, Sweet Lolita Dolls, or Harajuku Dolls, or anything like that, I can be a little more lenient. I don't mind that the outfits aren't one-to-one -one perfect, accurate Lolita coordinates. I would have loved to see them take it further and get even more accurate, but I don't think it was totally necessary. I just like seeing the inspiration and how it was interpreted for the line. And now we're going to talk about brats. And brats have always had their fingers on the pulse of fashion. What's trendy, what's new, what's going to be popular. So it makes so much sense that in 2004, they would release a line called Tokyo Agogo, which I'm going to be honest, is one of my all-time favorite Bratz lines. What I love about this line is that it is very accurate to the early 2000s J fashion scene. Again, that old school Fruits magazine style decor, but it's also altered and fitted to a Bratz aesthetic. So you have the layers and you have the mixed patterns and the accessories, but you also have the skirts over the pants, the crop tops, the camisoles. 
Like, they didn't just use the Tokyo backdrop as set dressing. They clearly put a lot of thought into actually engaging with the fashions and the trends in Japan while still maintaining that signature Bratz aesthetic. Everything down to, like, even the specific colors they chose, I absolutely feel like I could see these girls in a vintage issue of Fruits magazine. I don't know, I could sing Tokyo Agogo's praises all day, honestly, I love this line so much. I do think they could have stepped it up a little with the boy dolls. Like, they're so cute, but I just don't think they have the same oomph that the girls do. Maybe that's just my bias against men's fashion speaking. Okay, last one I want to talk about, Barbie. Yes, even Barbie has touched upon J fashion in her lifetime. Also from 2004, under the Fashion Fever label, the line Tokyo Pop. Now, I don't think these nailed it quite as hard as Bratz did, but I still definitely see what they were going for. Drew, I think, is the best one for me. She absolutely stands out as a J fashion girly. Again, very fruits. The rest, uh, I mean, I think the spirit is in the right place, and there's some really cool elements. Like, the bottom half of Kayla's outfit, especially with the lace-up shoes, could be a really cool old-school Lolita cord. It's just that the top half is definitely doing its own thing. And Barbie, that's definitely a Chinese-style dress worn in a line centered around Japan. Which, I can say that wearing Chinese clothing is not super uncommon in Japanese street fashion. There's actually quite a lot of give and take when it comes to China's and Japan's alternative fashion markets, but I don't think that was intentional on Mattel's part. I don't think they intended to feature that kind of nuance. I think they just messed up here. I will say that I love Barbie's attempt at a Hime cut, though. I think that was actually a pretty cool thing to include. And that brings us to the end of the video. This was a lot of fun. I think it's always fun when I get to share my other hobbies on this channel and find ways to connect them back around to dolls. It was also just cool to look back and see the different ways J Fashion has been incorporated into different dolls. And as it becomes more popular, you know, I'd love for another line to try and tackle a purely J fashion concept again. There's so many resources now, so many creators in the community, so many visuals and websites that with the right amount of research, I think they could have the potential to nail it. But now it's your turn. Tell me which ones featured here in the video were your favorite. Which ones were your least favorite? Also tell me in the future, how would you like to see J Fashion incorporated into fashion dolls? And if there's a big one you think could also have been featured in the video, let me know. And when you're done with that, just be sure to like and subscribe for any future fashion doll content. Thank you.